Wow. This is going to be a great between the stud shoot today. I'm so excited. Unfortunately, it is. Oh, oh what is this? Oh, 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 that's good. Oh, yeah, good. Oh, good. Oh, oh, there we go. I don't know whose bright idea was this to use a 1951 Chevy truck, but it's taken us four hours to get you back for all the supplies we oh, yeah. need for the show. This show is going to be all about showers and all about sluder, and so it's going to be awesome as long as we all live. So, what do you guys got in the truck that we can load? Oh, lots of tools. Mike, what do we got? Look. Well, we got a hole saw here first, so this is sometimes you have to drill a hole in the wall to get a pipe to go through. So. How did we end up with an extra shower drain? Uh, oh. I'm not supposed to put this in the towel. Don't forget this. Oh, we got our trowels here, oh. so we have different trowels for different applications oh, yeah. of many different things. Oh, yep, pipe wrench. You never know when you're getting that when you're installing a tile shower. Ah. Grinder. Tony's got the grinder here, so sometimes you have to cut tiles into odd shapes to make them fit in the shower. Yep, we got our level and we got our square to make sure everything's running nice We're and We're also through. gonna make a cake. Look at here, we found a cake batter. <laughs> that's, that's to mix up the thin set. Oh, okay, well, looks like we got also this thing to decorate the cake, so I think we're all about cakes <laughs> today. Caught gun and sealant, yep. Well, oh, Lonnie, are you yeah. hungry? I am hungry. <laughs> and we got a lot of tile in here, guys. Oh, I got yeah. the mosaics, Kayla. Yeah, yes. look at how oh, pretty. Look how these are gonna be great for the shower. I love this. And then don't forget, we need the shower head too. There we go. Yep, we got it all. Okay, guys, we gotta hurry. We gotta open up. So okay. let's finish the rest of this. Yep. We'll start in a second. Okay. All right, good. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, Mike, I'll <laughs> push the truck. Off. You Just pop the clutch. clutch. You got it. Last, last, I was taking a bath. Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northern Indiana, Northwest Ohio, and also parts of Southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Between the Studs. I am so excited about today's show. We are going to be talking all about showers, tile, the underlayment system, the history of how showers have evolved. There's so much more information than you probably thought about showers, and we're going to tell you all about it. Well, and I especially love the porcelain showers, and they have been around with tile for so long. And we got some really, really, really fun stats. But one is, did you guys know that a ceramic shower done right, or a porcelain shower done right, can last 60 to 80 years? Wow. And you know, time. this truck right here that we're sitting in right now is older than 60 years. This is a quarter ton Chevy 1951, Ooh. five window, and the side windows are curved. This is like the deluxe version of the Chevy back in 51. Yeah. So we decided to name her Gertie, so she's the newest cast member between the studs, and she'll be appearing on some of the episodes with us this year. All right, enough about the uh, vintage truck, because this is actually almost older than Lonnie. But I've got some shower stats for you. So first, do you guys take showers in the morning or in the evening? For instance, who takes a shower in the morning? Definitely. Who takes a shower in the evening? Wait. Wait. That, oh. that, that bump. Ah. I she sleep needs better. <laughs> okay, here's another really fun one. Okay, who takes a warm shower or hot yeah. like you? Who yeah. takes a cold shower? What? Oh yeah. my goodness. Better for well, my skin. Yeah, and it does keep you sober also. <laughs> That's true. Well, and Guess what? 75% of people admit to peeing in the shower. <laughs> yes, but 95% of the wives don't know it. <laughs> and also, I think that cures athlete's foot. So, oh, ooh. That's what I've heard. Uh, uh. <laughs> Simple stat, it says 7 out of 10 people shower facing the water, but I can't imagine that. I tend to kind of go like turn around and pirouette. And just, <laughs> I know, but it's definitely something that 73% of people said that it's a time for reflection or planning, oh. mm. um, dreaming even in the shower. Mm, I've heard the stool in that, we call it the library, is also a reflection time. <laughs> <laughs> it's also been said that 48% of Americans wish their shower was larger. At Granite Ridge Builders, we can address that problem. <laughs> That's true. You're right. And now the average person in America washes their hair 5.7 times a week. And four out of five people wash their hair first when they're in the shower. So I always thought you worked yep. top to bottom. Makes yeah. sense. Wait, since you do that in the morning and evening, I think you might be at least 14 or 15 times. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. So who's the ones who are only doing the two to three times is my question. <laughs> the, average. the average person also takes a shower that's roughly 13 and a half minutes long, and they normally shower 6.7 times per week. And yeah. I think they use about 25 gallons of water doing those showers. Yeah, you don't want to see my water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's also something called the Navy shower, Tony. So oh. you uh, you basically go in, get yourself wet, 
turn the water off, and this is a way to save, can, conserve that water that Tony was talking about, that 25 gallons. You rinse yourself down, you scrub, turn the water back on, and then, then you're clean after that, and it saves a ton of water. I think that's more for Luke with that sailor shower <laughs> thing, because we love cold. That sounds like a kind of a cold shower, and I am lean towards that hot. Half of people say they turn their shower temperature up as high as it will go, and that is definitely me. Oh, wow. <laughs> You know, that's really good information about some of the stats about showers, but let's do this. Why don't we give our audience a little history lesson about some of the tile and also some showers? Well, the reason tile is so important to talk about today is because it is used in applications all over the world. We use it in churches, we use it in mosques, restaurants, hospitals, and in people's homes. And the applications can be so many different places. People use it on floors and walls. We see it on even roofs, stovetops, walkways. I mean, really, tile is everywhere you look. And the ceramic tile really started about 20,000 BC. You can go that far back and catch the roots to it all. Then it was around 4,700 BC. We start seeing the Egyptians forming this into a pottery that was turning into a waterfall that was turning into what we call a shower. Hmm. Now, going all the way back to 3,000 BC in ancient Mesopotamia, that was one of the first instances of colored tiles. So they found colored tile that they used to protect their buildings there in uh, ancient Mesopotamia. Now, um, some of the oldest known ceramic tiles, along with Tony's, were used on the Royal Gate of Choga Zanbil. Say that again. <laughs> I have it written down here because I could not do that again. <laughs> now, some of the earliest reports of decorative tile being used date all the way back to King Nebuchadnezzar, so biblical days, mm. where he used it to beautify, you know, and add some curb appeal. You know, that, nice. that was prevalent clear back in, you know, 4,000 years ago. He, he made decorative lions and horses and tigers and everything like that on his walls wasn't there. Wasn't that like a gateway to yeah. their nation? Yep. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Now, it was really the Egyptians that figured out how to make the clay tiles more waterproof and also more resilient. They figured out that if you apply more heat to that brick or that tile, that it would become more durable and more less porous. <laughs> so back then, there were a couple hundred degrees they were able to get to until they figured out a way to kind of create a more primitive kiln. Then they were able to get that up to 2,000 degrees, and that's when they really realized that this tile was something that could be used for more building products. So they were doing it on roofs, floors, yes. walls. Yeah. Now, the ancient Greeks improved the Egyptians' method and added a drainage system. The Romans came up with the ultimate cleanliness because they came up with the sewage disposal system for wastewater. Hmm. Then as we think about showers, actually the first modern shower was invented in 1767. Actually it was patented by this William Freetham. He was a stove maker and he figured out a way to pump the water and actually it used less water than a tub at the time. So it was very popular. Okay. The Victorian area brought around the mass production of tile, and so it became less expensive, more common um, to, to all people. So we saw a lot more of it being very decorative inside the home where you would have guests, and then any place that you would have maybe like kitchens or bathrooms would be the plain and simple tiles there. And it's also the first, ex the first time we heard of the needle shower, which we would call the jetted tub. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And all during this time, they were doing mosaic tiles. And that's these little small pieces. They would be putting those in everywhere, floors, walls, ceilings, cathedrals. But I've got the best one. Usually those tiles are about one inch by one inch, but they can be anywhere from three quarter to maybe two inches. Well, let's say they were one inch by one inch. Somebody came up with an amazing invention in 1920, and they put them all on this wire area. And so think of this. If you have one inch by one inch on a 12 inch by 12 inch little strip, you can do your tile work 144 times faster. Wow. Wow. Oh, big fan. Big fan. For all time. And it really is the 1950s when using tile in, you know, uh, Restaurants and industrial use really just blew up because of glazing. The glazing of the tiles made it so it was a very nice, clean, sterile, easy to clean surface. And that's when thing, people just started pulling that into uses for all sorts of different things. Then in the 1960s, that's when the first tankless water heater was invented. And that changed kind of things when it comes to uh, the amount of hot water that you had available. Now, everybody pay attention. This oh. is an important <laughs> announcement. Granite Ridge Builders is now standard in all of our homes offering to put in a tankless water heater. Wow. Now, this comes with a warning. <laughs> we mentioned 13 minutes was about the average for showers, right? Ooh. Well, now you have 
unlimited hot water. So the oh. Granite Ridge people <laughs> building houses, it might be 16, 20 I, minutes. I don't want to yep. see your water bill. <laughs> well, that, that sounds like a, a, a tankless water heater is probably in demand quite a bit. On demand, right? No, it's on, it's on demand. On demand. But, well, it's in demand. People want it's, that. It's on demand, though. In demand is the proper way to say it. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's both. <laughs> oh, okay, stop, stop, stop. All right, Kayla, you said you were going to give us an idea of all the tile uses that we do today. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can see them everywhere. We love to see them in backsplashes, countertops, even floors, walls. I mean, really, in, in your home and in the commercial world, restaurants and, and hospitals, you see them everywhere. Cathedral. How about outdoor? Yeah. Living. Absolutely. All right, stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this show. We got a lot of information for you, and we have a big secret on how you can make your showers waterproof. All right, guys, on let's get our All right, let's go on back. Well, Let's go Romans for a cruise. Let's go. Hey. Aqua. I'm going to pull my best Teen Wolf and surf. <laughs>Okay. As you can see behind me here, we've got one of our full shower systems uh, that's put together. As far as the wall is concerned, we've got a couple different options. We've got our curdy membrane that goes over top of our drywall. That's this here, right? This is, that's correct. Right. This is our curdy membrane. Uh, this is a polywoven fleece that gets thin setted right over top of the drywall. Now, I've heard this before and I want you to confirm this. Once it's all oranged in, like behind me here, it's completely waterproof. We could technically turn on the water at that point. That's correct. Yeah. And, and a lot of times you'll run into situations where customers will ask about the waterproofing. As soon as it's orange and there's a two inch overlap where all, all seams come together, you can start taking showers. Now, wow. once it's waterproof, we can start installing the ceramic tile or the porcelain tile. Now the key there is we used to, the industry used to always rely on the tile and the mortar and the grout and everything to slope correctly to ensure that it was waterproof. If you're relying on the tile and the grout, it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to have a leak at some point, correct? That's correct. Uh, a, a myth that a lot of people are under the impression of that tile and grout is waterproof, and that's not actually correct. That's where the waterproofing system comes into play. Yeah. So if you do have just this, you know you're going to have mold, you're going to have tons of repair, ripping out whole showers. It's a messy, messy thing. Uh, and that's why we took the stance and said, you know what, we want the best. We want to have a, and it's a lifetime warranty on the waterproofing, correct? That's absolutely right. Yeah, so it's lifetime. You know, it's not going to last just 20 years and then your grout's going to chip away. Even if your grout does start to lift, it's still waterproofed 100%. That's correct. And not only that, our installers love it. It takes half the time of a traditional setup to waterproof this membrane and one guy can do it in a couple hours. Correct? Absolutely. One of the big things we pride ourselves on is the fact that it's so efficient and dependable. Uh, a lot of times the waterproofing traditionally would take up to three days from start to finish. And then now we're running into a situation where guys are installing tile at noontime. Yeah. So now we've kind of covered the shower. Let's focus on the floor a little bit. So we use what's called a Dietra underlayment on our floor. And it kind of almost looks like a, a waffle kind of pattern. It reminds right? me of like the Lego base. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. So the Dietra has a couple functions as, as well. Um, when installed properly, the Dietra offers load support, uh, moisture management. It offers an uncoupling and vapor management system. So you system said as uncoupling. Well. Does that just basically mean how well the ceramic tile will bond to that subfloor? Or what does uncoupling mean? Not necessarily. Uh, to, to put it simply, uncoupling means that uh, we're basically eliminating the shear tension between the tile and the subfloor. We're allowing for separate rates of movement uh, that tend to eliminate the cracking of grout and removal of tile. Okay, so I think what, if I'm understanding correctly, like when we put tile over subfloor, so it's wood, 
Wood's going to move and expand and contract at a different rate than ceramic tile will, and this allows for those independent movements to happen, so there's no issues with the finish floor. That's correct. Okay. And one of the coolest things about the Dietrich system is you can actually install in-floor heat, correct? That's right. We also offer a Dietra heat system. Uh, offers the same benefits as the Dietra. Uh, the only difference is, is it's a carrier system for one of our heating elements that can be clicked into place, completely customized per room, and uh, now you've got a heated tile assembly. Well, I think you guys can tell that you guys are the experts at this, and they've thought every little detail. They have hundreds of products out there that help us to make sure everything's waterproof, that the tile's going to last a lifetime. So we feel really good about the partnership that we have with them. So. I think we need to, you and I need to practice this and get certified. Let's what try it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's test it out. So Luke, I've estimated at Granite Ridge Builders, based on the number of homes we build each year, we're setting about a thousand tub shower units every year. Right, and when it comes to those prefabricated units, basically there's two options. There's fiberglass or there's acrylic. Fiberglass, just a bunch of fiberglass come in together that they glue together and they put a gel coat on the inside of that. What it does is it provides a very strong unit that's very light, very easy for us to move in and out of the houses. The acrylic though is mm -hmm. stronger than fiberglass. Kind of an engineered plastic. Yeah, some, uh, some another it. name for acrylic is plexiglass. Okay. They build, you know, bulletproof windows out of it. They do acrylic nails. They do, you know, all sorts of things with plexiglass. So and is that our standard these days? That is our standard. Okay. Yep, we use a, a acrylics max version. Uh, so it's very strong, more durable than the fiberglass, will last longer, a little bit more, uh, can take a little bit more punches, so to speak. Okay, and fiberglass comes in different shapes and sizes. So we could go, go as little as like a three by three, yep. which is pretty tight, Yeah. pretty tight. If you're going on a cruise, that might work <laughs> out. But anyway, pretty tight from very large, like five foot or even six feet long. Yeah, correct? they can get six feet and they can get very, in, you know, wide too, so 42 inches. So there is some flexibility there, but if you really want something truly custom, that's where the tile showers come in. And they also come in different shapes and sizes, particularly as you move to porcelain, then we can do like a corner shower, right. a long shower, showers with doors or without doors. Yeah, lots of glass or lots of tile, depending on your preference, multiple entrances or exits. So there's a lot of flexibility when it comes. It truly is just like we build custom homes, you can build a custom shower. Right, and I think the trend is larger and we're seeing showers from probably four foot, occasionally three foot, all the way up to actually room size showers. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, then you can get multiple shower heads, different types. You can get uh, showers big enough for more than one person. Some people like that preference. And again, porcelain allows you a lot of different varieties, particularly in color and styles and design. At Granite Ridge, we've got it all. We do. I love what we get to talk about because we get to talk about the fun and pretty stuff when it comes to tile and showers. So I'm going to start, there's a big difference between what type of tile that you pick. We have a porcelain, a ceramic, and we're going to talk a little bit about terracotta. Those are probably the three most popular. So when we talk about ceramic tiles, one really great identifying way to pick a ceramic is you're going to see a red side to it when you're looking at your tiles. So that is because the ceramic is made out of clay. They're going to fire it at a really hot temperature to make it what it is, and then they're going to kind of paint um, or put a, a pattern on top of it. Now, the difference between a ceramic and a porcelain, um, ceramic is a good product, but porcelain, I would definitely say, mm -hmm. is a little bit better. So you have that one here, yep. Um, porcelain's usually going to be a little bit thicker, but the differences between the porcelain is it's going to be more baked than fire clay. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to make it stronger. Um, you're going to be able to tell with a porcelain that there isn't that red color. What they call a porcelain is a through body, so that color goes all the way through. So if you get scratches, you're not going to be able to see it as easily because that color is the same all the way through the tile. So it's stronger. It's not near as porous. Um, because ceramic is made out of clay, mm -hmm. it might have a little bit of porousness to it, maybe not a, quite as water resistant, but because the porcelain is baked and because of the properties of the material, it's gonna be less porous. So it's gonna be definitely a preferred option when you're talking showers and things like that. So those are some major differences between the two. And then you have terracotta. Terracotta is a beautiful tile, but it's definitely more natural, a little bit more brittle, um, and you're gonna have a lot more variant in color because it is natural, it's out of the earth, you never know what you're gonna get, but that is some of the beauty of terracottas as well. So we've talked, there's many other places to mm -hmm. put tile, uh, fun places like a backsplash. So there's a lot of popular colors. Usually it's a rectangular shape that we're seeing in your kitchen backsplash, but this is a place, a lot of our homes are really neutral. Mm -hmm. We're going real neutral, and this 
this is a place where you can really add a pop of color or some extra design. We kind of call it the jewelry of the home. Or you can do something safe and classic. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a lot of neat designs, neat colors. You also, in your shower, could do some accents too. So we're doing, uh, it might be a big strip down the wall mm -hmm. that could be a glass tile. Uh, you mentioned these tiles, but there's also glass. Uh, mm -hmm. There's metals. We even have a leather tile. Isn't that crazy? There's so many different types of tile and the applications. When we're talking about some of these decorative tiles, it goes great in the showers, but we still need to make sure we have a nice, what we call a field tile, a large tile mm -hmm. to, to surround most of that shower with. A popular thing that you're going to see right now are going to be the wood looking tiles. So you're going to have longer rectangular ones. Um, what's really coming back are just those large tiles, 18 inch tiles or 36 by 18 or huge four foot tiles in your showers. The larger the pattern is really what's a little bit more popular right now. And one other consideration too, don't forget your grout color. Mm, That's absolutely. important too because that can really change the look of what you choose. It's a big thing to take into consideration, the grout, but also let's have a little bit of fun in the shower. What about heated tile? We can do that in bathroom floors, your showers. You can even do it on benches and things like that. So heated tile is a great way to splurge a little bit on your shower or bathroom floor. Now to finish it up, Kayla, we've talked about porcelain, we've talked about leathers, but there are a lot of other types of tiles. So we've got granites, we've got travertines, marbles. Limestone, I mean, so many different ones out there. There really is a plethora of options. We can't wait to talk to you more about it in our Granite Ridge showroom. Come over and take a look. Well, ADA, which is the American Disabilities Act, is very important to our business. We have a lot of people come in to build a new home because they need something that will fit their needs. And when it comes to showering, that's no exception when it comes to designing these homes. Right. We often call it barrier-free or accessible showers. And porcelain, let's face it, has really opened up a lot of opportunities for us. It has. We design a lot of these showers. Now, there are certain requirements when it comes to size and what you're going to do in those showers. For example, the size, you're going to want at least 60 inches in width. Now, there is a minimum for entering that shower, which is really, it's only 32 inches. But right. if you're going to start from the beginning, we would recommend up to a 42-inch opening to get into that shower. Right. And then also getting into the shower, we call it the threshold, which is really a barrier between the shower and the, ba and the bathroom itself. And typically, we have a, a ledge, about three or four inch mm -hmm. ledge, but in an ADA accessible shower, we may be at floor level mm -hmm. or maybe an inch or a half inch above level, enough to where the wheelchair could easily, or you could walk over it easily. And we do this in a lot of our homes, even if it's not an ADA home, it's a nice look and people like it. Uh, there's other things to consider too in the shower. You're gonna want a bench, some sort of place to sit right. in the shower. Some niches maybe, some place for the soap and that, that's convenient. And make, yes, yes make sure you can reach those. And then of course your shower controls, make sure that you can reach those. There's a lot of great options as you can see and it's important whether it's just you who needs this for accessibility or you have a caregiver who's helping you you want to be sure you have the correct amount of space right and you know it's not that expensive if you plan for it it could be a five to ten thousand dollar addition to your home but hey if you can shower comfortably yeah that's what life's all about
One of my favorite parts is always when we get to talk about the extravagant, the famous, the exciting type of features that we're dealing with. And today with showers, there's no shortage of that at all. In fact, many times Granite Ridge has been um, kind of a, a trailblazer in our area for tile showers and showing some of the neat ideas that are out there. One of them that I remember was a walk through shower. That's right, you had an opening on both sides. You could walk through the tile shower. On top of that, we could even think of ideas where we've shown the technology that was there for the side where you could program the shower so you could have one person gets in comes to this temperature uh, the next person goes in goes to a different temperature and has different jets activated and then the most exciting i think i've been hearing about lately mike is the aroma therapy again we know how much a certain aroma can help us relax and doing that while you take that shower can really be a pleasure yeah, Izzy, and I'm I'm really geared towards like the natural type of showers. You have yeah. your waterfall shower. So you have the ones that have like the raindrop, but then you actually see waterfalls. They have real waterfalls that cascade over and you just shower in it. Yeah. Um, another one, those outdoor showers that you have plants, natural, they're just beautiful. Yeah. Those are things that I can really get behind there. The, you have your steam showers too, Izzy, where you just turn it on and then it steams and you, you have that, uh, that calming effect as mm -hmm. you're taking your shower. And then there's another shower here that I found that has a plunge pool. As soon as you get done with your shower, you can just dive right in, get all chlorined up, and then go take another shower right after. The combination of shower and bathtub in the same space is another one that we see here that really is extravagant. Take a look at this million dollar master bathroom here. And don't forget the walk into the shower can be a very exciting part. See here, lots of different ways we have a spiral entrance into the shower. A lot of natural stone involved in this shower here makes it have that natural outdoorsy feel. Again, from rustic to so many different types of showers we can see, but I hope you'll always join us because you know we're gonna bring you some of the most exciting showers or exciting features of anything that we're talking about on our show. All right, everybody, back to the truck. We gotta wrap this up. Well, hopefully you guys found this to be a fascinating episode. Tile is one of the important parts of our building these homes, and you know, there's just so much depth to this. And you know, one of the areas that people sometimes don't think about a tile is the roof. Every once in a while, we will use clay tiles on the roof, and it's more prevalent down in Florida, but it's one of my favorite things when people do that. It really oh. sharpens up the outside. And Luke, I think that is a lifetime guarantee on that, just like our shingles are on our house. Right. Now, of course, you put tile on your floor. We do that all the time. But in a bathroom, you might use it as a baseboard and then also run it up the wall. That's a beautiful look. And again, outside is becoming very, very popular for tiles, like, for example, on hot tubs and in pools as a surround. Mm -hmm. We see a lot in kitchens too, from a backsplash to a surface of a countertop, even now range hoods being decorated with it. Yeah, we're seeing, and continuing on with that outside, Lonnie, there's a lot of outside stairways, raised garden beds, pathways through gardens that you see tile used a lot. And you might all be surprised, but we're doing them on verandas, screened in porches, decks, and even the decks around the pool. So yeah, and tile now has a lot more usage outside. Mm -hmm. Including fountains outside. There's all types of different water features that you can do and create with the tile that are just going to make your house look more and more beautiful and increase that home value. Kaylee, we've run out of time. Would you go ahead and close for us? Absolutely. Thank you all so much for joining us today. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please pick up the phone and give us a call. Visit our website, or even better yet, come in our front door. We would love to talk to you all about showers and tile. Okay, Mike, take us for a ride. Start yeah, so with it. We'll get that out. pop the clutch. We got this. Oh. Hey, Izzy, I have another tip. I dare you to drink this. I heard this will keep you from aging. Is this an Urschel family secret? It is. It is. Go for it. <laughs> it's great. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he took some. No, I just hit my lips. <laughs>